Hi, uh, my name is Vincent McQuatter. I'm the Outdoor Development Officer for a charity in Yesha called the Outdoor Partnership. Uh, this project that you see going on behind us is part of uh, a project that's been going for the last 10 years uh, with uh, the building uh, of kosher road skiffs and the creation of clubs up and down the Ayrshire coast. Uh, the first club was created in uh, Thun in 2010, which at the time uh, I coordinated with, uh, with the Duke of Edinburgh Award in the South Ayrshire Council. This project behind me has uh, now been going for almost nine months. Uh, the intention is to have this boat behind us completed and this boat will be for a new club starting in air. Uh, over the last 10 years we have clubs in Troon, Presswick, Maidens and Girvan and the missing link in the Ayrshire coast is, is air. So we've always had ambitions to fill in that gap and have a club operating from Air Harbour uh, for the people of the community. So we have behind us uh, volunteers from various clubs in Troon uh, and Presswick who have been since July 2021, been working on this boat. Uh, we have the donation of this shed here in Auckland Cove, and we have other boats going on uh, getting built. So we have a new twin boat being built. We have maintenance going on and uh, other boats from other clubs. And the volunteers have been coming uh, in the evening and during the day for the last nine months helping to build this boat. Uh, the plan would be in the spring, summer of 2022, we'll have a club up and running and we'll have members of the community that can join it and get involved in this exciting new uh, sport of coastal rowing. I'm Cameron. I'm Mia. I'm Blair. I'm Tegan. And we are here uh, with Air Academy to help build a boat and also do maintenance in some other boats. And over the past few weeks we've been coming in and helping sand this boat that's behind us down and help build it and learn about the building process and also perform some maintenance on some other schools boats. We have also came to a decision that the boat behind us is going to be called the Selkirk Grace. When we first came here my first thought was wow what are we going to be doing but it's just good to see how much progress we've made and what we've done so far is just really good to see. And it's been really satisfying coming in every week and seeing the progress. Like when we first came in, this started off as just a couple of planks lying in the ground, but now it actually looks like a boat, a functioning boat. At first I thought it was going to be a little bit boring, but now that I've saw all the processes of building the boat, I think it's quite interesting. Pretty much it, but it has been good just to come in and do things that are beneficial and help. <laughs> yeah, and we're glad that we got the experience to do it. And it's been great fun meeting the guys who are all really nice and interesting. Hi, I'm Bella Kerr and I'm from Generations Working Together and I've come here today to find out more about what's been happening intergenerationally between young and older people and boat building. And I'm here with Ingrid, who will introduce herself in a minute. And we've been speaking about the difference that intergenerational work can make to young and older people. In particular, we are interested from generations working together in relationships that are formed between young and older people. And this boat building project has shown over the past 10 years to be something that's been very, very good at connecting young and old, building on old skills and experience with older people and bringing in younger people from school to find out about possibilities of making things, taking part in things out with school and learning about an older trade as well as building relationships with younger people. Now I know that Ingrid has been working with the younger people and bringing them along and I'd quite like if she would share some of her um, stories on the difference it's been making here. Thanks Bella. I'm Ingrid from Air Academy Parent Council and we've been so delighted now that Covid's eased off a wee bit that we can bring the young people up to work with the older guys in the shed and they both just, well both groups seem to absolutely love it. Um, we, they take the kids so out of their normal environment and we bring them up to the middle of nowhere it feels I think to them and uh, they come into this shed and 
I mean, some of them are quite animated and you know quite boisterous when they come up, but the magic of the boat shed just uh, seems to work on them and they work away with the older men. And uh, they've just, in fact, there's been ladies here painting as well and all working away together. And they just completely changed. They just came out of their shells. And we had one particular group of second years, and they were so animated speaking to the the guys and about like doing apprenticeships. And I think it's just such a different, it's diff such a different environment, women, no, sorry, environment for them. Um, and they just like they just enjoy hearing about how to build the boat and uh, what the what skills the men have, and just something different for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think we never, well, we were taken in second years, but they all came just for a week each to try it out. And it's just great to see how they all interact. And um, this group that we've got now, they are coming from third year, so they're doing Duke of Edinburgh. And uh, they'll, they'll do like a block of weeks. So I think that really helps to let everybody get to know each other. And um, it's just going really, really well. It's just a really good project. Okay, and, and do, they, do they, the young people get to know people in their community through this project as well? I think that they're building the relationships with the people here, whether there's people maybe in their neighbourhood or community that they could relate to having had this experience, mm -hmm. because obviously in the past down this coast there have been many, many boatyards, they're not here anymore, but I think you know if they were to speak to somebody or meet somebody that would, there would be a spark of interest there for sure. Yeah. So it's something that could grow in the community and bring young and older people together as well. What's lovely is it's not just the building, they're working to making up a boat club, mm -hmm. and uh, a boat club, and uh, then people of all ages get together, they've, they've built the boats, and then they can go out on the water and, uh, and race as well, which they're, they're all frighteningly competitive in here. <laughs> That's and not to put too much paint on, because it makes them heavier and they'll go slower. <laughs> It sounds like just such great fun. Yeah, well, thank you, and and you know, thanks. So it's really great to meet today, and good to hear more about the stories that are happening between younger and older people in the community. Hi, I'm Blair, and I'm Mia. I'm Tegan. I'm Cameron, and we are Air Academy pupils. And since just before Easter, we've been involved in the boat building project for the Duke of Edinburgh. Uh, this is our head teacher, Mrs. Trainer. Uh, how does this project benefit the school, Air Academy and the pupils? Okay, well this project has been a long time coming. Pre-Covid, um, myself and another couple of members of staff from Air Academy had gone to school in Edinburgh and this was a project that they did that they felt really, really benefited their children. So that was something in my head that I would really want for, for Air Academy kids. And then I bumped into Vince one day who said he could potentially help us to make it happen. So that's kind of how it originated. Um, in the project from the very beginning now, we've worked with Parent Council and with our Minister, uh, Reverend Gemmell, to get some funding um, to allow the, the boats to, to be bought in a flat pack. Um, and the funding came from, from Ian's, Ian, David's cousin, um, who is in the Masons. He's sadly passed now, but David's keeping in contact with the project so he can follow it as it, as it kind of goes and hopefully as we launch it into the river. Um, Vince has also been very helpful in getting us some lots of different monies and funds and all the rest of it. Do you remember what? Through the, through the Duke. Do you remember what? Yes. And Air Community Fund, Air College Community Fund. And Air College Community Funds is the other one. So this is where all the money's coming from essentially. So um, Children at Air Academy, these guys are doing the Duke of Edinburgh and they have come along here as part of their skills and the volunteering um, to, to put this together. So we've had a number of different children in and out who have been um, involved in the project and these guys have been the ones I think the, the longest standing. Is that right? So can you tell me then how it's benefited? I know as from a school, I am so excited that we have got a boat and that we are going to be launching a boat. That has been one of my dreams forever and that is absolutely fantastic. I'm delighted that that's happened. Can you tell us how you've enjoyed um, building it? Uh, yeah, it's been great to come along and learn about the boat building process and how boats are made and actually, you know, take part in building it. And it makes us feel proud that we've actually contributed to building the boat. Absolutely. I think a huge shout out as well goes to, to the volunteers, the, the gentlemen and the ladies who have given lots and lots of time. Can you tell us how these guys have kept you right? Yeah, they kept us right quite a bit, but they just kept us going with telling us stories <laughs> over and over again. But yeah, it was really fun to keep going with them.
good stuff. So the boat is obviously almost built. You know, it's looking like a boat, which is looking absolutely super. What are we going to do now, Tegan? What's the next step? Are you guys going to get some lessons? Uh, maybe Vince, maybe you can join us and tell us about what's, what's next, Vince. Sure. Uh, this, is, this is part of a, a wider project uh, where we've been working on introducing water sports and rowing to the River Air. Uh, so that's been ongoing for the last three, four years, and there's now an after-school club established uh, with Scottish rowing, which is a different type of technique. Uh, the next stage of that is to get uh, the boats into the sea, because these are coastal rowing boats. So the plan is to work on creating uh, a club and a venue down near the harbour. Uh, we're working closely with the council to uh, re-establish and reuse and repurpose the old dry dock down the air and that could be the base for uh, getting these boats launched and introducing coastal rowing to young people. And we've got the, the, the added advantage of having the river air and the water sports up there. So we've got two boats, two different locations, uh, and a great bunch of adults and volunteers and young people all really look forward to, to kind of uh, upskilling, learning how to row on the rivers and the sea and learn a bit about seamanship. And, that adds to your boat building skills that you've learned, so uh, a great whole package, uh, and we're not finished yet, there's more to come. Thank you, Thank you very much. Absolutely, um, in terms of the skills and working with you know all the, the volunteers, and a big shout out goes to Ingrid as well, who has arrived every week and driven the boys and girls backwards and forwards, she's fed them, she's looked after them, and her poor ears have been melted with her chat all the way to school and back every day. So thank you very much to Ingrid for that as well. I think in terms of just kind of skills for life, you know, this project has been absolutely valuable. You know, we are big on giving back to our community and this is something that has really been a massive community project, so that's been a real benefit for the school. Can you tell me what the boat's going to be called? I know calling the boat is a, calling the boat a name, giving it a name is a really big thing, isn't it? So can you tell me a wee bit about what the boat's going to be called and why you picked that? Um, we're calling it the Selkirk Race. Now, this was Blair and Mayer's idea as they came up with it apparently from the the uh, Silver Grace written in the school canteen, which I think is quite nice. The uh, challenge for coming up with the name of the boat was to name after Robert Burns, something to do with Robert Burns, so Silver Grace just fits perfectly. Absolutely, totally agree. Really like that idea. Um, anything else that you guys would like to say? A big thank you to everybody involved. Obviously, you've learnt lots of new skills. One to tell the grandchildren when you're older, I would imagine. Anything else to say? Thank you for giving us the opportunity to come here and to, um, you know, partake in such a, an amazing thing. And it's been great to get down here and meet with the guys and take part. Super. Thank you very much. If you're not allowed to use any mechanical fastenings, so we glue everything together. To glue everything together, we use epoxy. It's a two-stage epoxy comprising uh, the epoxy and the hardener. We mix them together, 
We then paint both the mating surfaces with the epoxy, some of which is absorbed into the grains of the wood. And then later on, although not too much later on, we go over everything again. This time we've added some filler to the epoxy. That takes up the space between the two mating surfaces, makes the glue more thicker, and uh, that's where we're up to now. Uh, hi, I'm Ray. Uh, I'm one of the volunteers here helping to build this skiff. Uh, you will have noticed that we have laid up and uh, glued the keel. But it's quite cold in the shed today, so one of the last things that we do to make sure that the epoxy goes off and hardens properly is that we have three low temperature heaters inside the hull of the boat. They're already switched on. We've now covered the boat in a uh, double glazing wrap. Uh, and we shall leave everything as it is until Saturday. That will keep the temperature inside the boat hole. That will cause the epoxy to harden. Everything should be good to go after that. Hi, I'm Bill Davis. I'm a member of Troon Coastal Rowing Club. Um, I, I came into the coastal rowing about uh, seven years ago. I was invited by the head technical teacher at Prestwick Academy to help build a skiff for them at the um, the Maritime Museum, they have a boat building uh, academy there. And that's what really got me started. And the day that we had the launch uh, and I got into the boat and rowed, I was totally hooked and have been ever since. So right now, we're, we're in the middle of a programme of building boats, two boats for uh, a local school in Ayr, a third boat for the Troon Club, um, I think, well, you, you will see through the the, uh, the rest of the film, you see how the, how the work is progressing. It is thoroughly, thoroughly absorbing. It's, it's a brilliant thing, you know, it's, it's, it's a quintessential man shed. But we all come up there and work, and it's wonderful. The camaraderie in the club is terrific there. That's the whole, the whole uh, sort of thrust of, of the coastal rowers is, is, is the fellowship. And it, we, we enjoy each other's company, we enjoy going out in the sea here. This morning it's very, very bumpy. We've been out bouncing about out, out there in the waves and it, it was really, really exhilarating. It's a great occupation. I would thoroughly, thoroughly recommend it to anybody. But also, come and help us build this boat, these boats. We need a lot of people to help sandpaper stuff and all these things. It's a very noisy environment, the big, big shed that we work in. It's a huge shed in what used to be part of the southwest of Scotland Agricultural College. And the, uh, the shed we were working in was used for training poultry farmers. So it's vast and <laughs> we are managing to make a lot of sawdust and stuff in there. And coincidentally, boats too. So it's a pretty good, it's a, it's a lovely situation. We're also training other people how to, how to build the boats and how to use tools. And it's a sort of a, a learning process too. It's a learning process for us, for us all because things might go wrong and then we've got to learn how to, to correct them. And we just go on progress like that. But it's uh, essentially, it's a very, very, absorbing and very, very rewarding activity and the, the, the charity that's, uh, or the organisation that's spearheading this is to be commended for it.
Now at Westminster, I joined the Joe Cox Foundation, and that was highlighting the danger of loneliness. It's as dangerous to your health and well-being as diabetes. And when we think about loneliness and isolation, we do often think about older people who maybe have lost their partner over time and are stuck at home on their own, and what can we do to involve them? But actually, we see loneliness and isolation in every single age group, including young people, including middle-aged people who maybe never got married or are now divorced. We've got more single people in households now than at any time in the past. So loneliness, or the potential for loneliness, is in every single generation. And we have all experienced that to some greater or lesser extent during the pandemic. And we saw the reaction of the community afterwards when events like Wintertainment or the Troon Gala or other events came back after the pandemic, they were absolutely jammed. Because things people had taken for granted for years, they suddenly missed when they were lost. And what we have in addition is within generations, we have families, we have young people, particularly boys, who may have no male role model in their family. They live a long way from their grandparents or their uncles, and maybe their mothers on their own. And so they have no positive male role model to teach them things, or even to challenge them, to react with them, to support them. And I think this intergenerational working, and obviously we're going to hear about the amazing boat project, there's a subtle hint in the two of them that are parked outside. Um, I'm not going to steal Vince's thunder, but he won't post, so I'm going to post on his behalf at how wonderful the postal rowing has been. Not just for the young people who've got involved in building it, but everyone who's had a wee shot like me. Unfortunately, I've never had the time so far to take it up, but I am retiring this year, so maybe if I get off things, I'll get in a boat. But that kind of incredible creativity We've seen it inspire communities up and down the Ayrshire coast, but we've also seen it connect to people across the water so that it brings communities together. And um, the reason that I am here today is because I spoke in a debate in the Scottish Parliament last year, um, an intergenerational week last year, and I became very, very interested in how do we actually move something that we all know and understand is good? How do you move that from being a nice thing that happens to a really important thing that is within the practice of all of us, and, and that includes parliamentarians? How do I make sure that we talk in the parliament about this in a way that crosses all the different sectors? It's about housing, it's about education, it's about health, it's about all the elements of people's everyday life and the benefits are there to, to see. So it's important for us to hear the messages from yourself so that we can go back and embed that in the work that we do in Parliament so that it comes through in all the parts of uh, the, the services that are out there for, for people. I, I also have to say that it was an absolute delight to go and see the boat at Oki Cove and to see it uh, as it was at the time that I went, it was quite early on, and they were shaping the wood to make it look like a boat. Um, and I was absolutely fascinated by that. And then the young people here are telling me about how you this morning, how you, you then make that able to go in water and make it waterproof. And so all of these things help us to think and to work together. And one of the elements that I, I took back to the Parliament from that session was around the workplace uh, environment for young people in schools. How do we get that kind of hands-on experience for young people in the classrooms? Um, and a very, very simple message that I took away was that how would you get a boat into school these days? Because new schools are not built in a way that the design and buildings are on the bottom, maybe with big shutters. You know, so there's lots of practical elements that we as uh, parliamentarians need to make sure that we raise about all of those uh, kind of things. So, a wee bit about the St Isles Skiff. This project actually started in 2011 uh, with the first boat in Ayrshire being built uh, in Troon. It was supported by pupils from my colleague doing the Duke of Ember Ward and these same local volunteers. And that was launched in 2011 with the first St Isle Skiff in Ayrshire. The project then moved on to Presswick 
with young people from Crescent Academy building boats as a DV. And then in Carrick Academy, it was built in Carrick Academy, and that boat is now situated in Maidens. Then after that, it was in Girvan. That was built in Girvan Academy with young people and volunteers. So we've now got to position where we've got the, the whole of South Asia coast and all our ports and harbours with a St Isle skiff. Uh, this, this boat was started uh, really at the beginning of close to 2020 when we were in the middle of that pandemic, if we all remember that. So on the good times when we could get out, we started this boat in a local shed up at Rocky Crew Estate. And uh, for the last three years, volunteers here, pupils from Air Academy uh, and Air College have been coming out of school and coming up to, to build it. So and it was finished just about a month ago. So we actually have two boats. They were lucky enough to get funded for two and that other boat will get launched uh, in June after the, after the exams. So I'd like to invite Catherine. So we have a tradition within the Scottish Coast of Rowing of we use a quake, we have a Nairn Seminary, a wee bit of whiskey is poured over the bow of the boat and I do have iron brew for the young people before anybody gets a bit uh, panicky here. Uh, and uh, Catherine will name the boat. Thank you Vince. Uh, thank you. Me again everyone I'm afraid. Uh, this is not the only reason I came. <laughs> uh, it Make is an enormous pleasure. This is such a beautiful skiff. If you haven't had a look, have a good look at her soon. But it's my enormous pleasure to name this boat. Are you ready? I'm going to take it back on. Throw it down. The Selkirk Grace. again with the pupils who helped build the boat, but this time and we'll make sure it's washed out. So these, are, these pupils actually came up with a name, so we had a competition and because it's air we gave it a Robert Burns theme, so it's come up with a name connected to Robert Burns and this is where we got Shelter Grace from. <laughs> 